Hello there. Before we start the video let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. This tutorial video is about Workday HCM core concepts. Workday HCM is a cloud-based, human capital management software solution that integrates various human resource management functions into a single system. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and check out other videos related to the latest technologies on our Uptalk channel. This video will be covered by Mr. Daybashish, who is a certified trainer in Workday HCM. Let's welcome him and get started. Now, coming on to the core concepts, guys. When I talk about core concepts, first of all, we'll have to understand what is cloud computing. I'm sure a lot of people would know already, but uh, if there is anyone who wants to talk on that, I will be very happy. At least I'll have an idea that, you know, how many of you actually know about cloud computing. So when I talk about core concepts, guys, the, the most important part to know or understand is what is cloud? Because this is an, you know, I would not say this is a new buzz. It's It's been there for last 20 years. Last 20 years, there has been a lot of organization which is actually using and they're not actually telling it in the market that they are using it, but they have moved on to cloud. Of, they have moved a lot of applications on the cloud. And cloud is going to be the future technology as well. Now, why it is going to be the future technology? Because of the principles that it follows. So cloud computing is basically a model in which you do not own anything. OK. Like how you rent an apartment the same way you are only using the services when it is required. If you don't need it, you can stop it and that's it. You don't need to be owning it. OK, that's that's the best part of it because you save a lot of money in that. Next part. What are the different type of services which cloud computing gives you? Cloud computing gives you all the traditional services which you think which you want, but again on the subscription basis. So it has three basic pillars of you know uh, technology. So one is called as IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service. Okay. Then the second model is basically or second pillar is called as PaaS. P A A S platform as a service. The third model is called as SaaS. S A A S software as a service. Now, where Workday falls in? Workday falls in the third pillar of cloud computing, which is your software as a service. So, the company has built a software which is on cloud. We call a software or an application. And they are selling that application to all the customers, all the companies to use it as per their requirement. Right? So we will try to see all infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service one by one to give and understand how exactly does that work. Okay. So when we talk about infrastructure as a service, what comes in infrastructure? your servers, you need a database, you need a middleware, basically to run any enterprise application, these three things are required. Memory, right? Um, a platform where you can develop things, right? So all these things are again provided on virtual machines. So this virtual machines are basically your servers. It will be provided to you in case you want to stop or start any service. Let's say I have a requirement of 30 terabytes of space I would need and I want that 10,000 of my employees can share that system. OK, so this is what my requirement is. Now, if you go ahead and buy that space or if you buy a machine, 
which has that much of space and you know you all these 10000 employees login you will be able to create it will cost you a huge amount of money okay and you have to maintain that as well in your premises so that is a big cost so in order to avoid that companies like amazon what did they do they built an application okay they built a server which can be accessed virtually now that is the reason you call it as aws so aws is nothing but a server which is situated all over the globe it is a it is called as amazon web service so if you have to access anything on the web because all the applications and everything all the infrastructure is available on internet so you need a web connection to do it so they have installed or set up different different data centers all across the globe if you talk about us they will have four to five data centers in us you will have one or two in canada some or you know one or two in south america if you go to the european region there are four to five in european region you come to apac you will have one in china in fact two in china and one in india uh, one in singapore one in australia one in new zealand right so in this way they have distributed their data centers now they are big big servers in fact you can think that they they have 100 uh, 1000 uh, you can say terabyte of spaces in one data center and in fact one server so one data centers consist of 100 200 500 servers also so that is huge amount of capacity that they are giving and that's the reason everyone nowadays is moving towards such providers so those infrastructure is basically called as virtual machines so you need a server you pay for it just take the services when your requirement is over hand it over back to them so that <coughs> i'm sorry you don't have to pay extra for that you don't have to you know keep anything with you they can go ahead and you know just uh, recycle it and again they will give it to somebody else so that's how exactly it works so all your infrastructure everything is available on cloud so this is where uh you know the things have become different than the traditional systems so that is your infrastructure as a service then comes platform as a service what is pass in this we would not know what is the infrastructure which they are using so let's say someone who is a pass provider aws also is a pass provider okay they are also a pass provider in fact i'll give you certain examples for infrastructure as a service so if you have to look for major players in this area who provides this services aws is one then you have microsoft azure then you have google cloud then you have oracle cloud but these are not limited to this you know there are a lot of people or sorry not people but i would say a lot of organization who has come into this area and they are giving spaces in the local uh countries also these are global players but you will see uh, let's say for uk there is specific provider they will only provide you space only in uk because of certain uh, regulations and policies like gdpr right some companies like financial transactions they can only keep their data in their country and they would prefer no i would need somebody who is a uk company so they will be a local cloud provider in uk that happens in european region as well same same way if you come to india there is also the same kind of policy so you cannot go ahead and keep the data of indian customers outside of india so they need a system somewhere here so you will get these infrastructures available here right then when we talk about the pass model so in this the infrastructure is on cloud but they will not tell you what infrastructure is you know is being used they will give you just a platform example is salesforce have you heard about this name salesforce anybody yes yes yeah. right so salesforce is a world global or you can say the world's number one crm so their crm is basically a platform where you can develop your own solutions now what infrastructure they are using we would not know are they using the data center of amazon i don't know is it aws we don't know if they have their own infrastructure we don't know 
so this infrastructure part is not visible to anybody only the platform will be given to you where you can go ahead and develop anything of your choice if you want to build an app you can do that you want to build an uh, a particular tool you can go ahead and do that provided you know the uh, development tools and languages which they are using now what could be this development tools and language which they are using what does that mean so salesforce has their own uh, development tool they they are they have their own database they have their own uh, language called apex visual force and lightning these are the things they would need so that you can develop anything on that platform windows is a platform nowadays windows has also gone on to cloud now if you are developing a solution which is windows specific then you will have to put it in such a way that it will only work on windows how can you do that so that is the power of the platform right it gives you certain products like sales cloud service cloud uh, in, you know uh, marketing cloud all these things works on that platform they are interconnected and you can use it like a crm so that is how your platform comes into picture similarly aws google cloud oracle uh, azure they also provide the platform but you would know that they will be using what infrastructure microsoft will be using its own infrastructure AWS will be using it, their own infrastructure, but if you want to buy that infrastructure also, they are there to provide you. But Salesforce would not be able to give you that infrastructure, but it gives you only the platform. So if you have a requirement that you only need platform, then you can go for uh, Salesforce rather than going with AWS or Azure, right? So that's how the market is growing. Then comes the third model, which is SaaS model, which is software as a service. So if you have any application which is hosted on any cloud, we will not know what is their infrastructure that is being used. We will not know what is the platform where this application has been developed. So our tool that we are going to study, which is Workday, we don't know on which platform has this been developed. We don't know where is the data center located. We don't know what is their database. We don't know what is the front end or the middleware which they are using. We don't know any of this. We have got an application like you have got Microsoft Office. You want to use it for your office purpose, your document, your Excel sheets and everything. You can use it. Similarly, Workday has been built in such a way that it gives you all the features ready made available. You just need to configure it as per your requirement and you are good to use that so this is the reason why this product is again expanding in market because your lot of cost is reduced right okay now i'm actually going to walk you through or show you the workday tenant guys uh, because that is something which you would need to understand what and how are we going to use it okay so just bear with me for a minute. So this is this is our tenant that we will be using. Okay. So let me walk you through some of the options that you see here. So this is my home. Okay. So let's say I'm anywhere in the system. Let's say I'm seeing my pay slips. I'm just giving you an example. I'm here somewhere. I'm looking at this particular company. And then, you know, this particular company has so many members, roles, security groups, all these things are there. Okay. But I, I really don't want to go back, but I really want to go back directly to my home screen. So what I will do, I'll just push this button. Okay. So I'll go back into home screen. All right. So let's say I have to complete this activity. I'm doing some like assign pay group for hire John Edward. Right. So you see, this is like an inbox for you. Okay. You see this as an inbox. So inbox is a feature which is given by Workday where your corporate email ID, like let's say you work in Microsoft. So your your ID, your email ID will be like uh, maybe, you know, Ravi at Microsoft.com. Now that email ID will also be configured with your Workday. So whatever emails you are going to receive, which is related with Workday, you will get it on your corporate email ID as well. Okay, but let's say 
and, and you know, you are a manager and you, one of your employee has applied for a leave, right? So you will get a notification on your inbox. This inbox plus your main inbox, which is your corporate email ID to go ahead and approve the leave or reject it, whatever you want to do. So that is how exactly it works. So that's the reason we call this as inbox. You see this? This is the icon for your inbox. So there are 12 items, which is there for this user who is called as Steve Morgan. Okay. So all these are listed here. So if you look into this, this is the first one. If you go into this, this is the second one, right? Create workday account for Ajay Kumar, create workday account for Pankaj Kumar, right? So all these are what? Tasks. How will you do it? So you need to know how to do it. Then only you will be able to perform it. It comes like a, uh, you know, notification, but you see, when you go into this, oh, it got refreshed. So I just, I'm just trying to show you that if you have this number of tasks that you need to perform, it will be there in your inbox till you actually complete it. So if I submit it, it will, it will not allow me because this is an, you know, a mandatory field. Let's say I want to do something like assign uh, ADP China and I'm going to submit it. I don't know if it will allow me or not, but let's see. See, it says success event submitted. Next, payroll partner, approval by payroll partner, right? Now, if you see the number of tasks has reduced to 11, right? So that's how exactly it works. 